Eunice Lumalas, a very unique name and personality. Please tell us a bit about yourself. Okay. First, my name is Greek, but aside from my name, um, mine is a journey of, uh, as a lawyer, um, spanning probably from the time I was 13 years old. That's the time I made up my mind I wanted to be a lawyer, you know. I'd never seen a lawyer. My parents did not have lawyer friends. We did not have lawyer neighbors, but I felt that that's what I want to be. Probably I watched a lawyer on TV, Remington Steele or Derrick. We had some programs then. Um, but other than that, I think um, for me, I am an advocate right now, practicing under Lumala Sachin and Kaveri Advocates. Uh, we are three lady partners, equal partnership. Um, but before then, I have my legal trainings and beginnings at a firm that greatly inspired my future. Okay, so I can trace almost everything to my experience at uh, the firm of Mohammed Mugai Advocates, where I had uh, two great masters, one of whom was uh, David Majanja, who is a judge right now, and the other one was Gidu Mugai. At least I worked closely with those two. And um, now, my passion, my life is traced, rooted in that experience, so that my key focus in terms of my areas of practice is trial law. So I'm a trial lawyer and I'm also an arbitrator. I'm, I generally am a dispute resolver because I'm, 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 I'm a passionate alternative dispute resolution practitioner. But all of that comes from my experience at Mohammed and Mugai and the wonderful people I, I met there uh, who inspired that journey. So here at Lumalas, Achieving and Kaveri Advocates, you have an all-female partnership. What informed that decision? Partly it's chance, eh? but it's great chance because uh, I have a fantastic team of ladies, uh, just a perfect match. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of the law firm really started with uh, myself and someone who is actually not a partner anymore. Uh, we, we had that idea together, but she preferred to stay in employment, as many women do, you know, because of uh, uh, maybe the security that employment uh, offers, other than the the life of getting out looking for business that private uh, sector you know um, offers the other thing that we chose however um, the other partner now my partner Eunice Cavere who is in charge of commercial or commercial division was the roommate of the other lady and our last partner Paulette Cheng who is in charge of infrastructure and uh, property related matters always used to joke, you know, the way we, uh, our law firm, our, our tag is LAK, Luck Advocates. Mm -hmm. So she always used to say that L needs to be Achieng, not Ajima, who was meant to be our other partner. Mm -hmm. And finally, when Ajima was not able to come, somehow it just fitted. We met her, she said, really, I'm interested, I need to come out of employment. But we were together at Mohammed and Mugai. And she stayed there all the time. Mm -hmm. And she said, you see, I told you, I was meant to be a chain, not the other one. And then that's how, that's how, it's, that's how we all started. So we are luck advocates. Mm -hmm. And um, I have fantastic partners, that I must say. Um, we all specialize in different things. Um, and being an all-female law firm has been good. Actually, women can work together and support each other. And we really we are testimony to that, I think. Um, and it's been nice because, because we are a fairly young firm to get out there and get work. The 30% procurement rule and AGPO certificate has really helped, I must say. Thank you very much, Uhuru Kenyatta, for that. Because in terms of government work, we've managed to, to get through merely because of that um, aspect, one, and, and also in organizations that really promote and want to promote and work with women. So I think. So far, so good. Let's talk a bit about your work. You have great experience in litigation, and, and that is very amicable for a female lawyer. And I'd really like to know, and the rest of us would like to know, are there any areas of practice that you have delved in that you believe are unique, diverse, and a bit dynamic? Let me tell you something. Um, I always 
like to refer to Gidu because uh, he, was a, he was an interesting boss. Actually, a lot of um, my inspiration came from him. There's a time I was driving with him to court and I think someone asked him, can you recommend a female litigant? And he went like, um, okay, wait a minute. A woman, is there one? You know, in, in, in a way to say, are there any women litigants existing? Mm -hmm. um, and I think at that time we had trailblazers like uh, um, Judith Ongori, but I think her specialization was purely family. I guess at that time. But that question kept me wondering, um, how can it take him so long to think of a female litigant? You know, and uh, I think it's true. Uh, it's litigation is, is, is a war. In courtroom is a war scenario. And a lot of women are not that into belligerence. So it's, it's something that um, probably we are slow to get into. But in terms of whether there have been any unique um, matters or areas we have dealt or I have dealt with or dealt into. I think um, I find it exciting because for me every case has its own uniqueness. Okay and um, being a trial lawyer really um, there are matters that maybe one I can only maybe, maybe mention one or two where maybe perhaps you have a case that involves high-ranking uh, government officials and it is a purely political matter and someone is being prosecuted in a criminal trial and you know it is a prosecution possibly in vain and uh, it was maybe instigated because of um, differences in political choices and alignments at the time. I have a case like that, it's still in court um, and it was purely political and things have changed politically and we keep wondering why are we in court um, but you know, you, you meet such uh, situations. Um, probably the other uh, maybe unique scenarios I could give is where probably you need, you are working in a case where you are um, negotiating, you know, terms. For example, with the, the one we did with the, with the doctors, uh, it went from trial to alternative dispute resolution, which was very good because I love ADR and I love trial as well. So it gave me all that. Uh, unfortunately, it led to doctors being jailed, which was quite unfortunate, I must say. And then it also, it also involved negotiation of terms. And, and I think it was, it was, it was unique in, in that sense. But from what I can tell you, I'm yet to get more. Um, I have an appetite for more um, experiences. I think um, every, case, every case is unique. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have accommodated and employed in the past uh, lawyers with disability. Please tell us a bit about that. Um, generally, it's been pupils with disabilities. And I think when you look at the history of the legal profession, um, we did not, I think, initially have a lot of people with disabilities. But now, a lot of lawyers are being churned out of law schools. And we are getting a lot of physically and uh, physically uh, challenged and, 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 and pupils or young lawyers with other forms of disability. And I think it's always good to take time to think of the, the challenges they must have would be more, perhaps, than those experienced by uh, those who are completely uh, okay, you know, fit in all ways. And so therefore we've only had, I think, two, two cases that we had to accommodate uh, uh, students or pupils who had uh, challenges, but it, it was good because it took a, a decision of us as partners to, to take that decision knowing very well that you might have an associate who may not go to court, you know, and in terms of resources also, you know, uh, it's a decision you have to make, but it, it's something you need to think about and get out of your way. It's not always about profit. You also just want to assist someone to go through the pupillage and move on to become a lawyer and do other things and their challenge is more exacerbated than that of, of people like yourself and me, you know, yeah. yeah Eunice Amasi, that's a very noble, the, uh, very noble act that you undertook to be able to accommodate uh, lawyers with physical disabilities. Now on to Nairobi Legal Awards, you were awarded Lawyer of the Year 2018. Please just share with us your experience through the nomination process and on to the final award. So first I must say, I do not know to date who really 
nominated me and why but I must say thank you to that person whoever it is um, because it was a profound experience and um, I must say even as I was sitting there at the dinner for the award ceremony I had no idea that this is going to happen and I remember when we were listening I was sitting with a number of my friends to the names of the award days being called we were observing it was male after male after male um, and we were like oh my god is it just going to be like this so I was I was pretty surprised but I was grateful um, I must say with the hindsight that I think it was just God's way of telling me or oh, probably Eunice you're in the right um, place you have the right focus and also probably just encouraging me uh, to continue in that way because I can tell you I there are many outstanding lawyers um, but I went through the process with a bit of skepticism because I was like, um, well, what is this all about? You know, it was the first legal awards and a lot of people probably were not also, just like me, taking it uh, seriously. But I went through a process of being questioned. I answered some questionnaire. I was called for an interview. I went there uh, almost grudgingly. Uh, but I, nonetheless, I sat at the interview panel and I answered my, the questions that were put through to me. And I thought they were objective and I thought I would hear nothing of it. So I was surprised. Yes. And I think it was, um, it, it actually was a good idea for Nairobi branch to think of, uh, of that award, award, mm -hmm. award ceremony and the award system for lawyers and mm -hmm. law firms. Thank you so much. So let's, let's talk about uh, what do you believe is so unique about you that may have uh, informed your winning this award? Um, so unique about myself, first of all I'm unique because there's no other person like me and I think every lawyer must have that at the back of their mind on a very serious note. There's no other Eunice Lumalas in the whole world and that by itself is unique. But what is more profound about it is that trial law is really about credibility and you cannot persuade in court or be credible unless you've come to a place of uh, knowing that this is really what I should be doing and I had that confirmation I think for me uh, since leaving my uh, employment at parliament I had absolute comfort in knowing that I should be here I enjoy being in court I feel like it's my playground um, and um, I've come to accept myself for who I am, flaws and all. And I think that should actually be something also with lawyers. Um, being honest about who you are, um, um, being authentic as authentic as you can, that really helps in, I believe, in, in the profession of a trial lawyer. So if that's what the journey that I, I, I went through in 2017, 2018, um, perhaps someone noticed that I had the fire in court and I, I usually do, you need to come and see me in court by the way. Yeah. And I rarely lose if, I, if at all, on a serious note by the way. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Nice. <laughs> all right, yeah. so, um, so it's possible someone was in court and mm -hmm. someone saw me and, um, and like I told you truly, I, I rarely lose in court and mm -hmm. I had that confirmation and when I got the award I was like probably God is just encouraging me, telling me you have your finger on the right um, place. Yeah. So, Eunice, what has changed since you won this award? What has changed is I've been challenged. Eh? I've been truly challenged because it has exposed and uh, shown me how much more I need to do. It has woken me, you know, probably I was in a slumber and told me, well, uh, award aside, you need to know that there's still a lot for you to do. And it has made me refocus uh, my thoughts on where I want to go, what I want to achieve in the legal profession. And I have some ideas of what I want to do and where I want to go. And so it's been a challenge. I need to get more creative. I need to probably think of uh, ways of impacting law, knowledge in trial law. And I'm, I'm having some pretty good ideas about where I want to go. So the, I, the, the award in general has challenged me in that way and motivated me to do more yeah, and be more. And I'm embracing that every day. Yeah. All right, so finally, what would you like to tell probably younger advocates, especially female advocates, uh, who are aspiring to be um, great in practice and to uh, be able to be recognized for what they do? 
I'd like to tell everybody to to get to know who they are. You know, a lot of people go to law school for different ideas. Maybe people have seen some grand lawyers, um, I would Saville Raw suits. Others have been told by their mothers to go to school and study law. Um, but whatever uh, your inclination and your reasons for studying law, law is very diverse, you know. That's why it's a second degree in, in certain countries. But if you've decided uh, to study law, if trial law is not your thing, don't do it. If um, you want to focus on um, being um, an in-house lawyer, please do it and do it well. If you want to do um, maybe a different aspect of the law, um, if you want to just focus on criminal practice, do it and do it well. As long as you, you find that you're in the right space and you really you are convinced this is what I should be doing, improve on yourself, go for trainings, go and get that master's, go and get another training on trial advocacy, um, sit with people who are better than you, who have who have done it before you, who inspire you. And I think I've gotten a lot from the people that inspire me as well, also as a person. So there's nothing wrong with, um, with going after people who feel inspire you, sitting down with them, observing them in court, um, and uh, just going back to the values that were there when I think the legal profession was uh, started. And I think that's why I really appreciate the, the chairman and the team of the Nairobi branch of the Law Society of Kenya because of having thought about this uh, award at a time like now where we are going through a, a season in our country where people have probably a twisted idea of values, you know, probably want to get rich quick. You want to create miracles, you know, and I think it's a journey. Okay, so go through the journey, get a mentor, um, be a person of integrity. Let not your name, because I think having a good name is more precious than anything else. Build on a good name, um, be a credible and honest person. Remember, credibility is what wins in court. And just keep working at it. Thank you so, so much mm. for having us. And congratulations once mm. again for winning the award of loyalty. Thank you so much. Yeah.